1776, New York City was a stronghold of British loyalists and the central headquarters to England's troops in the colonies. For the Crown soldiers, it was a point of disembarkation for troops deployed to quell the rebellion. Now, buoyed by his success in Boston, George Washington moved Continental troops into the city, splitting his forces between the southern tip of Manhattan and across the East River on the Brooklyn Heights. He set up these forces on a low ridge of hills to the south and east to protect from a potential attack from Long Island. On August 27th, British General William Howe struck through a gap in Washington's line at Jamaica Pass. By all accounts, the undisciplined Continental troops fled back at the first sign of the Redcoats. For some reason, Howe did not press the attack any further, and after several days, the Americans evacuated across the East River to Manhattan under a cover of heavy fog. Despite Howe's failure to bring the war to a swift and bloody end, the Americans were in an untenable situation. With three sides of Manhattan surrounded by water and the superior British Navy patrolling the harbor, Washington realized that he would have to evacuate even further. Now, the retreat was disorganized and panicked, with Continental troops leaving behind vital supplies of food, clothing, and ammunition. The route became even more desperate as the rebels fell back southward across New Jersey. Howe pursued these dwindling troops until the middle of December, when he felt comfortable that the Continental Army was fading out of existence. Now, in many ways, Washington felt the same as Howe. He was watching morale sink as his men endured the hardships of hunger and cold. Desertions were so rampant that he had to post guards to prevent soldiers from fleeing. Finally, Washington was pushed across the Delaware River at Trenton, New Jersey. And on December 26th, Washington and his troops traveled back across the Delaware and made a surprise attack on the Hessian mercenaries garrisoned in Trenton. Now, after a brief battle, the Hessians were decisively defeated, and Washington won a much-needed victory. Impressed with this, the Britain's old enemies France, Spain, and the Dutch began to send much-needed arms to the colonial forces. However, New York City still remained under British control. Howe and his associates devised a plan to mobilize troops along the entirety of the Hudson River in hopes of cutting New England off from the mid-Atlantic colonies, and they hoped that this would create economic hardship for colonial forces. The leadership of this particular operation was split between William Howe at the southern end of the river in New York City and General John Burgoyne, responsible for his troops moving down from Canada. The hope was that the two armies would meet up in Albany. Now, guarding Lake Champlain was Fort Ticonderoga, once under British control and then under colonial control. And when Burgoyne arrived here, he set up artillery overlooking the fort on Mount Defiance. The rebels immediately abandoned the fort, and Fort Ticonderoga again fell into the hands of the Empire. However, Burgoyne's luck was beginning to run out. He'd made a choice to push further south through the forested hills and marshes of upstate New York, and burdened with camp followers and a lengthening supply line, his forces moved very slowly and were constantly being harassed by colonial guerrillas. When Burgoyne finally did arrive in Albany, he found that his much-needed reinforcements weren't there. This was because Howe had moved towards Philadelphia, leaving New York in the hands of Clinton, who had only a tepid interest in the plan. Spoiling for a fight of any sort to assuage his wounded pride, Burgoyne assaulted Continental troops at Saratoga on the 19th of September of 1777. The battle was a very hotly contested fight, with the field changing hands several times. And as evening fell, American General Horatio Gates, realizing that the British had wasted supplies and men, withdrew from the battlefield and simply waited. Several weeks pass, and with no sign of British reinforcements coming from New York City, Burgoyne chose to surrender. Now, the reaction to Burgoyne's defeat at Saratoga was enormous. Colonial morale was bolstered, and in England, opposition to the war began to swell. And finally, France finally decided not only to increase the arms they sent to North America, but also to send men. Now, one thing nice about this game is that it kind of builds on the rules. So you learn the basic game first, and then you move into the scenarios, which are the advanced game. And with the advanced game, we basically just add a few more combat rules, and then we also add rules for some new units. One of the unique additions to the advanced rules are the tactical combat cards. And these cards represent battle tactics that are employed by the armies of the period. Each side in a battle chooses a specific tactical combat card, and the attacker and the defender compare these cards on a matrix. The result is then used as a die roll modifier in the final attack. I find the tactical cards a little gimmicky, and they pretty quickly wear out their welcome. So I usually just drop it from the rules as it doesn't really impede gameplay in any way. Now, the Advanced Combat Results table is a little more complex than the basic one, 
And what it does is it adds a number of additional results. There's a DL1, a DL2, and an AL2, and those simply indicate the number of units a stack loses as a result of combat. And casualties are always taken in the order of the unit type. So the first type of casualty that will be taken are the Indians. This is followed by militia of either side. This is followed by regulars of either side. And finally, the French regulars. So say the British player had a stack with Indians, militia, and regulars in it, and they took damage. They would reduce the Indians first, followed by the militia, followed by the regulars. Now the CRT also takes into consideration die roll modifiers and so that the modified rolls can range anywhere from minus 1 to 10. And the designer also added the 3 to 2 odds column. And another thing interesting about this is that if attackers and defenders occupy the same hex and the attacker chooses to pass on their attack, the defending unit has the option to attack. However, this does not apply to units that are involved in any sort of combat that involves a fort or entrenchment. And basically, defenders in these situations cannot initiate defender combat. Another thing that's kind of fun is the multiple combat rules. What this means is that after the initial combat, players have the option to continue fighting in the same hex during that turn, and this is referred to as the multiple combat. So if the original attacker declines to attack, the defender can choose an attack, and the roles of attacker and defender reverse. The original attacker can attack again, or if they decline to attack, the defender can choose to attack and the roles of attacker and defender are reversed. Now combat odds are always determined at the time of each attack, as this can change due to casualties. And this form of combat can occur indefinitely until both participants decline to attack or a no effect result is achieved on the uh, combat results table, at which point the battle is over. Also, much like many other war games, there's automatic elimination rules. So if a unit moves into a hex and has a greater than 6 to 1 odds against an enemy unit in that hex, then they automatically remove the enemy unit from the board and they can continue to move. However, it does cost two movement points to eliminate that enemy. And units in forts and entrenchments are immune to automatic eliminations. Several new combat units in the game. In addition to regular units, the advanced game contains rebel militia and dragoon units that fight for the Americans and Tory militia and dragoons that fight for the British, as well as Indian units which also fight for the British. And when fighting alone against regular units, militia and Indian units defend with an attack roll of minus one. So if a regular unit is fighting, say, militia or Indian unit, and that militia or Indian unit is left without any friendly regular units in that hex, the uh, attacker gets a plus one on their die roll. Also, if these militia or Indian units are attacking a regular unit and they don't have any friendly regular units in the same hex, then they attack at minus one. At the heart of the advanced rules are a number of new non-combat units. And first of all, there's supply units. Now, supplies allow an attacker or defender to attack or defend at full strength. And if an attacking or defending unit is unsupplied, but facing an opponent that is supplied, the they attack or defend at half strength. Supply units are generally not depleted by combat. However, if a player chooses to engage in them multiple combat, like I mentioned before, their supply unit is removed at the end of all combat in that hex during that turn. In other words, at the end of all the combats. The use of supply in combat is always optional, and if a player uses their supply only once during a multiple combat, and chooses to fight unsupplied on all the other attacks and defenses in that multiple combat, then they retain the supply unit at the end of the battle. And players have the option to destroy supply units that they control, and they do this by simply removing them from the game. Now, if a supply unit is left alone in a hex, then an enemy combat unit can capture them by entering or even moving through the hex. Now, one time when you'd want to destroy a supply unit would be if you have a combat unit and supply unit stacked together, and it looks like the combat unit is going to be destroyed in the next round. And you'd want to do this to prevent the enemy from uh, obtaining your supply unit. Now magazines are semi-permanent supply bases, and they can be built by having two supply units on a town that's not occupied by an enemy at the beginning of a turn. And at the end of the movement phase, then they're considered constructed. Now magazines can't move, however at the beginning of a turn they can be broken down and replaced with one supply unit that can move. They can also be destroyed at any time and simply removed from the game. Magazines provide supply for all friendly units in a two hex radius, and they're not exhausted by multiple combats and can provide supports to all combat in their radius. In other words, if there's three different combats in three different hexes, they provide supply to friendly units in all of those combats. 
However, they can't provide supply across Class 3 rivers or coastlines. And enemy units can block magazines. If the enemy unit's between the magazine and the supplied unit, or an enemy unit is sitting on top of the magazine, then the magazine is considered blocked. And if both a friendly unit and an enemy unit are sitting on top of the magazine, the magazine will supply that friendly unit, but not units in the adjoining hexes. Now, if a magazine's left alone in a hex, then an enemy combat unit can capture it by entering or even moving through that hex, and the magazines then change to that player's color. Now, artillery represent heavy artillery units. Now, these are those big guns that you would use with fortifications. They don't represent the light guns that combat units would be hauling around with them. And they can only be used when attacking or defending forts and entrenchments. They have no effect in normal combat. Artillery units have to be in the same hex as a supply unit or within range of a friendly magazine to support combat. And if attacking a fort or entrenchment, then the attacker adds plus one to their die roll for each artillery unit that they have. They can only use these on units within the fort or entrenchment, and the defender can subtract one from an attacker's die roll for each artillery unit that they have in that fort or entrenchment. Thus, the attacker's artillery advantage can be canceled out or even be a negative number. Now, like supply and magazines, if an artillery unit's left alone in a hex, an enemy combat unit can capture them by entering or even moving through the hex, and the artillery units change to that player's color. Fortifications double the defensive value of the unit inside of them. They do not double the offensive value if the unit's attacking an enemy outside the fort, and thus units have to sally outside the fort and leave its confines to attack units that are besieging them. Now, units stacked under the fort chit are considered inside the fort, and those stacked on top are considered outside of the fort. As long as there's no enemy units in the hex, units can freely move into and out of the fort. However, if an enemy unit moves into that hex, and a friendly unit decides to leave the confines of the fort, then they have to attack that enemy unit. And friendly units that move into a fort hex surrounded by enemy units also have to attack, and can't move into that fort until their next turn. Now, enemy units can move through a fort hex if all of the opponent's units are inside the fort, and the enemy doesn't have to stop in that hex. And when attacking a hex that has both units inside and outside of a fort, then the units outside of the fort have to be dealt with first in two separate attacks. So basically what you do is you attack the outside units, you take the casualties, and then you can attack the inside units. Forts can be constructed from a supply unit, an artillery unit, and a regular army unit, not militia, in a town. And it has to be unoccupied by enemy units, and this is done at the start of the movement phase. Now the fort takes the entire turn to construct, and the three units are removed from play. And so thus the fort can't be used until the next turn. Forts can also not be built on entrenchments or other forts. Now if a fort's left alone in a hex, an enemy combat unit can capture it by entering or even moving through that hex, and the forts then simply change to that player's color. Players can also dismantle forts at any time, and the units simply remove from the game. Finally, entrenchments act a little like forts. They subtract one from the die roll of an attacking player, and they add nothing to a friendly attack. To construct a trench, the player simply stays on an unoccupied hex, uh, which, and it doesn't have to be a town, and the unit has to stay there for the entirety of their movement phase, and at the end of their movement phase, the trench is considered built. And like forts, they can't be built on other entrenchments or fort hexes. Now, any friendly unit that moves into that hex is automatically considered to be entrenched. This isn't like forts where they have to move in and out of them. And entrenchments can't be captured. And if they're abandoned and any friendly units leave that hex, then the entrenchment is removed from the game. And that is pretty much it for the basics, the basic advanced rules. Okay, I've got the 1777 Saratoga campaign set up here. You can see the units are running everywhere from uh, up in Montreal down to New York City uh, along the Hudson River. And this is where most of the action will take place. I think there's actually a Yep, Philadelphia, there's one unit over there. So looking over the scenario card, I've put my uh, replacements on the scenario card. And uh, victory conditions, the British player wins by occupying with at least one friendly strength point uh, the six following locations, Philadelphia, uh, New York, West Point right here, Albany right here, uh, Fort Stanwix up here, and uh, Ticonderoga up here. So they've got to they've got to have a unit in each of those. Um, it doesn't matter if the if the Continentals have a unit in that or not. So they just basically have to get those at the end of the game. Um, the five towns have to include New York, West Point, and Ticonderoga. In other words, they have to have this Hudson River axis. 
and the Americans win by avoiding the British victory conditions. So the British don't have it too hard in this. Um, let's go ahead and I wish you could shrink these down. We're going to just put this right here and we're going to put our first movement here for the British. They get to go first. And what I think we're going to have to do is we're going to start moving these guys down from St. John. Uh, we got to move all of these. So one, two, three, four, five, six. I don't think we can move any further. There's a stream right there. So actually he could move in, but I don't think I'm going to attack that fort just yet. And then one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, all of these are six. Actually, we've got some guns here. So we are going to put those here. Okay. We could have just left everybody there, but up on the... We could have left everybody up to the northeast, but that's okay. Um, up here at... Let's see, Oswego. Is that Oswego? Yeah, up at Oswego. I think I'm going to leave these guys put. Um, they're in that fort there, so that ought to keep them, keep them safe and happy. Now, I got these two forts here, Fort Constitution and West Point. And these guys are pretty well entrenched. I think I'm going to go ahead and attack. Do I have a gun? I do. Okay. I am going to go ahead and go up here and attack with six, one, two, three, four, five. Okay. And they have to be supplied. And then I'll use my other supply unit over here. And let's see, one, two, yeah, that's going to make it three, four, five, yeah. And then let's, uh, let's take this down, decrease. And I'm going to clone this, and we will move him here, and I'm going to keep five there for now. That's going to kind of serve as my reserve unit, and that is everybody. So now we can do our combats. This is going to be an interesting combat here. We've got five and six is eleven. I'm in supply and I have an artillery unit. So I am going to say that's going to be 11 to 4. Mm hmm. That's 5 to 1 odds. Hold on a second. I'm going to make it take it to. Wait, I can't. Let's take a look at our. Is there 6 to 1 odds on the table? No. Okay. So five to ones is good. I was going to send another unit up that way, but I think I'm going to leave them be. And they are in supply. And since they're in supply, that doubles the uh, attack. So that's going to be 22 to uh, four because the uh, Continentals are in their fort, but they're not in supply. So 22 to four is five to one odds. Let's pull up our combat results table, and we're going to roll, and we roll a six. Ooh, five to one at six. Defender eliminated. Well, that was pretty easy, so the British roll over these guys, and we will delete him and delete him, and this fort, I'm going to change to a British fort. Well, hmm, do I want to... That's a good question. Do I want to? I think I'm going to destroy it. So we're just going to burn the fort down. We might keep West Point, but there's no need, really no need to keep the fort there. And that's going to keep a unit or two uh, stuck. And we need the units moving around. So, okay, over at West Point. Um, let's see. It's going to be 20 to 1 odds. It's basically 6 to 1 odds, no matter how we slice it even with the doubling and all that other stuff so we will roll and we get a four at five to one half defender eliminated now with this i think since you do round up uh one half of one is 0.5 rounded up is one so that's going to be no effect um i could continue to fight there hmm 
I should have probably pulled down some. I don't really need 20 to 1 odds, but I should have pulled these guys around, but that's okay. We'll do that in the next turn. And that ends the turn. I think there's nothing else to do, so we can get rid of these. Let's move this down here. So now the Continental Army is going to go. Um, this guy has two, and that's going to be four. They're going to be pretty hard to take out. Um, I think what we'll do, I'm going to move him one, two, three. We'll move him here to Albany, both of these, uh, these uh, rebels. These guys are going to stay entrenched. Actually, I'm going to move him to Philadelphia. One, two, three, four. So the Americans are fighting a defensive war here. They could operate. Yeah, those guys are... I'm going to say come to me there. Um, don't think there's much else I can do. I don't really think there's going to be a lot of... Like I said, I think we're going to have to wait for the Americans to come, or the, 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 wow, I should try to get another unit in there. I'm going to do that. I'm going to make West Point difficult here. So I'm going to take this guy, and we're going to move here, one, two, and I will... I'm not going to attack. I'm going to stay there, but I'm going to defend. And in the next turn, I can move into the fort. So I'm defending. I think that, and so if I'm defend, or I'm not going to attack, so that means the British have the option to attack here, which they will. They'll take it. Um, it's going to be 20, it's going to be five to one odds. Let's see what happens. Six. Oh, Defender Eliminated. Well, that did not go well. And since this guy is deleted, and this guy we can turn into a... I wish there was a way to switch these over, but that's okay. I will take the Supply Unit. And British Supply. We will delete that, and we will stick that here. Well, that didn't... I was hoping to take, like, half damage or something, but... That did not work. Okay, that is the Continental move. We go to a British move. It's now June, and the British get a supply in Montreal. And we will put that up here. And then our movements. Okay. This guy's going to go on up to Albany. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We will attack Con... Fort Ticonderoga, and I'll move him, and we've got that supply now, down here. And I think it's important that the British uh, attack just as hard as they can, as fast as they can, so that helps. And that's going to be it. This is a pretty light game, really, so. Okay, we got... Wait a second. Oh, I can't. I did. I made a mistake here. Move this guy across the river. Because we don't need him. We can use him to blast the Brits here. Oh, is there a... Oh, there's a river there. Okay. So that's going to be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, they can make it. And let's start here. So we've got 10, 20. Are these guys in supply? No. Okay. So 20 to 4. And the roll will take a minus 2 because of entrenchments. Uh, the Continentals are in entrenchments, so that's minus 1. And they have an artillery, so that's minus 2. So 5 to 1 at minus 2, and we roll a 3, and we get a 1. And a 1 at 5 to 1 is a defender loses 2. Well, not great. Okay, and here at uh, West Point, 
we're in supply, so it's going to be it's going to be five to one plus one for the uh, for the artillery. We roll a five to one, so we get a six, and that's a defender eliminated. And that's what we needed. We didn't need a half defender eliminated, so that helps. That that artillery really helped in that case. And we are going to change that fort marker up. We will keep. Okay, we will keep that in. This may be a turkey shoot for the British on the against the uh, Americans. The Continentals may have a really hard time. The thing this is assuming over the real uh, campaign is that uh, Burgoyne's forces came down while House forces didn't go down to Philadelphia. They stuck around up here and went up to Albany. But of course, in real life. House forces went to Philadelphia. Clinton was left in New York and didn't do anything. And then that left Burgoyne up here in Albany by himself and got beat at Saratoga. Okay, so this is a six and a five. Now, both sides have supply, so we're good there. So uh, five and five is ten. Eleven to two. So again, five to one odds. Let's see, let's roll it. Five to one with a three. Um, half defender eliminated. Okay, they have two. I think we can, now they're both, uh, they're both militia, so it doesn't matter which one we'll take. Oh, I'm gonna get rid of the uh, militia first and then the rebel militia and leave the rebel dra dragoons. Okay, up here at Fort Ticonderoga. This one we gotta do a little bit of teasing out. Okay, he's in supply. He's got two artillery. He's got... And then the Americans are in supply. They've got one artillery, so basically the British will get a plus one. Um, we've got two and four, since they're in supply. Um, Basically, supplies are gonna supply supply and supply are going to uh, equal each other out. So let's just not worry about that. But this two and four times two will be eight, and the British have a five, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. So it's one to three to two odds, and the British get a plus one. So three to two plus one. Well, let's roll it and see what we get. We get a four, so they get a five. Let's see what the results are. Three to two at five. Defender loses two. Okay, we will delete that. And we will stack these guys back. I don't know why I'm stacking them up. That's the one thing about this game is if you play this physically, you get stacks and stacks of units. So you never want to hit the table because there's all these counters stacked everywhere. Okay, end of turn, or end of, uh, that's a phase, I'm sorry. Um, we go down here, and in Albany, we get another unit. We'll put that there. Ah, Fort Stanwix. Um, if I leave it... Hmm. I could defend it Albany. The, the longer I keep Albany, the better. Um, part of my Philadelphia guy is going to come back up here. How much is left here? Oh, that's a big unit. Okay, I'm going to entrench down here. That's the first thing I'm going to do. So these guys can't move. And, um... I'm going to have to stay put. I think that's about all I can do. Actually, yeah, I'm going to keep Philadelphia. There's no reason to... Morristown, there's no reason to keep it other than this is going to slow these guys down, which I think I'll keep doing. Here in Albany, I've got a three to... I'm not going to attack. Um, I will, again, I will entrench. And those are entrenched. Those are entrenched. Uh, here, I'm going to defend. So... End of turn. I don't think I'm going to attack anywhere as the Continentals. I need to build up some forces. 
Okay, that's the end of tenor turn two. Now we go to July. And as we go, we get some units. Uh, I got some Indians, a supply, and a regular army here. So we can move those guys in. Oh, I forgot to move this guy the last turn. Well, sucks to be the British. Okay. I'm going to break out here. And we're going to keep our cannon. Going to oh my cannon has to be in supply. I keep forgetting that. Gosh, is there is this guy in supply? No. Okay, there's no cannon there. Okay, let's do this. Let's decrease this down, and then we're going to clone it. Now we got our ten units. Uh, actually, I'm going to clone. I'm going to decrease this guy down to. Two, and then I'm going to clone him, and I don't know. This game is really nice for um, just being easy to figure out, intuitive. That's what I'm trying to say. I'm not getting that right. I not talk well today. Okay, get this guy in supply or in the fort, and then we're going to move him. Uh, five. Okay, the two is going to stay in the fort. We are going to... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two... Oh, there's a swamp there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We'll move towards Philly. Uh, this guy... I am going to split him. And then we're going to clone it. And one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, he's going to attack in Philly. Uh, this guy, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then Fort Stanwix, one, two, Indians, let's come down, and we will use these. I'm going to keep this, Indians I'm going to send off to battle. We're going to keep this guy in Oswego. One, two, three, is there a river there? Nope, oh, okay. We will attack Fort Stanwix, and of course we're going to attack here. Okay, this is going to be the, I think this is going to be the battle-y uh, part of the game here. Let's start here. We've got five to six to six, so we got one to two odds at a minus one. We roll a four and we get a three, and one to two at a three is a no effect. Okay, so these guys cannot, the Continentals cannot fight back. That's the end of the turn there. Okay, here we've got a five to two. Now, actually, that's going to be a ten because the the uh, British have the supply, so they're going to go with ten to two. It's five to one odds minus two. Five to one minus two. Um... That's a one, some negative one at five to one. Negative one is a, attacker loses one and defender loses one. So decrease and decrease. Um, the Continentals will not fight back. Odds are too great there. Okay. 11. Yeah, they've got the, now both sides have a supply, so that's, they, that con cancels each other out, so it's going to be 11 to 3. So 3 to 1 odds, minus 1. 3 to 1 minus 1 is a 4, or a 3. So 3 to 1, 3 is defender loses 2. Ooh. We will take this guy off. 
Up at uh, Fort Stanwix, we've got a two, uh, two to two. It's going to cancel out the supply on one side and the fort on the other. So one to one odds. We get a three at one to one. I think it's no effect. No, it's an attacker loses one, which will be the Indian unit. That goes first. Down here. Okay, this one we break out. I might just leave this all scattered here because it's easier. Um, they got two artillery and they're in supply, so that doubles them. Uh, the Americans are in supply, so they get Here we go. We're just going to put this in a little line down here. And we've got to indicate this supply is not with the others. So, Okay, so the Americans start out with two. So that's they're going to be doubled. That's We can just say supply and supply are going to cancel each other out. So the two is actually a four. And then the uh, British have a five, ten, fifteen. Uh, plus one. So 15 to four is three to one odds plus one. Okay, we roll a one, so we get a two at three to one. Defender loses one. Okay, that's takes him down to one. Okay, let's, uh, Fort Ticonderoga, we're just going to put our fort here. And I am going to leave these guys out just because it's easier to read, so... We'll just, so this is the British attacking Ticonderoga, and this is the uh, Continentals defending it. Try to remember that. Okay, end of turn. Fort Stanwix we did, yeah. Albany we did. Okay, all the battles are done. So we can say that's the end of phase. Um, let's see. Americans get, uh, at Albany, they get two more units. Can I... Okay, that entrenchment's kind of nice to have. I got supply. I think what I'm going to try to do is just drain the drain the British down there. Can't really attack back here. One to four, nope. Um, six to one. Okay, I do have that. So I can take advantage of this and say one to one odds. Let's fight that one. Now, I don't get the value of the entrenchment, but that's okay. We roll a one to one at four, and that's an attacker loses one, defender loses one. Well, that's I'm okay with that. We can decrease, and then the Brits decrease, and that's Philly. Okay, and that is into turn. There's not much the. Okay, we go to August. Nothing for the British. And um, we'll go ahead and move in Philly here. We're going to attack here, attack here, move up to the fort here and attack, and continue to hammer on Ticonderoga. I got to get the uh, Americans rooted out there. And I guess technically right now the British have won the game in that they've got control of these units, or they've got units in all the towns they need to. But I think I would do change the uh, victory conditions a little bit that they have to drive the Americans out because that seems to be really what affects the game. I think the victory conditions are a little too easy for the British here. Okay. Nine to five. So it's still one, it's three to two odds minus one. Okay. Three to two minus one, two is one. And a one is no effect. So we can't battle any further there. Uh, here we've got four and that's going to be a supply nullify or no it does not so eight eight to one so it's five to one odds minus two so six minus two is a four half defender eliminated okay that is let's see so they had a total of five so they're down to three we can get rid of this guy and then take him down, decrease, 
decrease. He's down at two now. Okay, here we've got a four, and that's actually going to be an. Oh, this is. I just played the wrong wrong battle there. I played the same one twice. There, you go back here. Sorry about that, guys. Okay, here it was a defender loses or what was it? Let's go back. Gosh, six minus two is four. Five to one at four. One half defender eliminated. Okay, there we go. And that's going to be nothing because they have that single militia there. And again, I think that's kind of a cool rule. Actually, it works out because you can sit there and kind of have to root these guys out and they will not fight back. Okay, up here at Albany, there's not a lot for the there's really not a lot for the Continentals to do in this game. Uh, three. They've got three, and they're supplied, so... 11 to 3. 3 to 1 odds, and minus 2. It's 3 to 1, minus 2 odds. We rolled a 4, so that's a 2. Come back here. I wish you could shrink this down. Um, 3 to 1, 2. Defender loses 1. Okay. We'll lose that Dragoon is finally gone. Okay, up at Fort Stanwix, we've got a uh, four to two. So two to one odds. We roll a four. Oh, there's those tactical cards. You notice I think I'm not using those. Two to one, four. Defender loses. Wait, defender loses two. Okay. And that will be a deletion. So we'll take that fort marker. And we will get a British fort marker. I will definitely keep the fort there. And then I will have to. Keep that supplied somehow, or not supplied, but okay. Battle of Albany. I've done that. Okay, back to Ticonderoga. Uh, this guy can now move in. Now you don't get additional doubling for each supply marker; it just occurs once. Okay, so we have two. Four total inside. Now supply and supply. All. So there's two for the Continentals. <coughs> Excuse me. And a minus one. But they've got two, so plus one. So it's going to be five, nine, ten. Five, ten, fifteen to two. So five to one odds plus one. We roll a five. We get a six. And that is a defender eliminated. So, we can change up stuff here. Now we have Fort Ticonderoga's under British control. They get an artillery captured, which we will keep. And they get a supply. Now, I used to play this every time. I think the way I played this when I used to play was every time you had a battle, you used a supply up. But uh, you don't have to do that. You only use it if you use that uh, multiple battle things, which changes up the game quite a bit. Okay, everybody here is stacked. I'm going to just put this here, and we'll stack these up when we move them. Okay, end of turn. That's our end of phase. Let's go to our um, turn record track. Okay, more come to Albany. They get a whole stack of these guys. And this time... I'm going to defend here, going to defend here, uh, attack here, 
and we're just going to have to wait and see what the British do. So only thing is going to be this uh, battle at Albany. And we are in supply. Okay. And now in this case, I think I will continue a multiple battle. But uh, we have two, four, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. And uh, we are in supply twelve to eleven. So one to one odds. Both sides are supplied. And. Uh, I will fight it. So one to one odds. Do I get any other? I'm in an entrenchment, so I defend at one. Um, we get a two at one to one. No effect. Oh, well, I was going to say we could battle back, but no, we can't. Now that we got the no effect, if I would have gotten anything else, I would have forced him to use those supplies up, but didn't do that. Okay going to keep our Albany guys here and let's go with our turn marker oh we're on turn five nothing for the British this is September um let's see here I think we're going to stay put here we'll fight here we'll fight here here we're going to go and I think we're going to try to send this guy down to Albany Here, one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, Ticonderoga, one, two, three, four, five, five, eight, four, five. Okay, we're going to try to use those. Artillery, if we can, we will fight it. Okay, there we go. That's the end of the British movement phase. Americans have five, and I've got nine. Uh, so three to two odds, minus one. We get a six and a five. Three to two at five, as defender loses two. Okay, there's one, and then we will decrease this guy by one. Uh, delete. Are the Americans going to fight back? I don't think they will. At least I'm just kind of, I guess, attritioning those guys. Okay, four. That's going to be eight. So five to one odds there now, minus two. So five to one minus two is a one. Negative one. Interesting. What is negative one on five to one? Tender lo uh, attacker loses one. Defender loses one. Okay. So we will decrease here, and we will eliminate this guy. That turns this uh, artillery into a uh, British artillery. Yeah, I'll take that. He's now a supplied artillery. Okay. So Morristown now has a unit. Um, let's see. I want to show these guys are in the fort, so put him here. There we go. And over here we've got five. We got six. We got 12. They're in supply. Their opponents are in supply. So he's got. 12 to 2, 4, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 1 to 1 odds minus 1. Okay. 1, 0. His attacker loses 2. Okay. That's. Let's delete this guy and take this 6 down to 5. Okay. I think this time I am going to battle back. So. This first round of battling back uses my supply. Um, we're going to go two, four. 
Okay, it's still going to be one to one. So we roll a three. One to one at three is an attacker loses one. Okay, so they're going to lose one. We're going to decrease this. And the British are going to attack back. Um, I think we're going to attack back. So we are going to lose this supply, but we still maintain our we still maintain ourselves at full supply for the whole turn. So this is going to be one to one still. Ten right, ten to five. Ten to ten. Yeah. No, wait, one to two. This is ten, and they've got two, five. 10, 11. So they're ahead by 1. Because of that 1, it's now 1 to 2 odds. We roll a 1 minus 1 is 0. Attacker loses 2. We'll decrease and decrease. And of course we want to fight back. So we're going to delete this guy. And uh, we still have 1 to 1 odds. Six at one to one. Defender loses two. Okay, are the British going to fight back? They got now six. They really don't have good odds. So I'm going to say no, they're not going to fight back. But the Continentals are. We've, we've used our supply. So three. So now the British have six. And then the uh, Continentals have three, six... 9, 10, 11. So 1 to 1 still. They roll a 6. Ah. 1 to 1, 6. Defender loses 1. Okay, I go back to the British. Do they want to fight? No. So I'll go with the Continentals. They still want to fight again. They get a 4. 1 to 1 with a 4. It's attacker loses 1. Defender loses 1. So they delete and decrease okay so we now have we're going to attack again five ten to four two to one odds four two to one with a four is a defender loses two dupes decrease decrease and we will not fight back and again the continentals will fight this time they've got Three to one odds with a one. Three to one with a one is attacker loses one, defender loses one. Decrease, decrease, and they will fight back again. Uh, two, five, six, seven, eight, nine to two, four to one odds with a one. Defender loses one. Decrease. Okay, now they're at five to one odds. They will attack again with a three. Uh, five to one with a three. Half defender eliminated. Okay, I think we're going to stay put because we could just end up with those half elim units eliminated. So it's going to be kind of futile. But that was pretty good for the Continentals. Anyway, I like that multiple that multiple um, attack thing. So that's kind of fun. Okay, what else? What else? Um, that was the British turn. That was the British turn, and they lost all those guys. We can go to the Continental turn, and they get more units in Albany. And what am I going to do? I think we are going to pop off here. And we are going to fight... Let's see, I got... I still got my entrenchment here. I got supplies. And okay, do I have two Okay, I have two supplies. So I am going to keep this at five to one. We want to keep this at five to one. And then the rest of these guys are going to move here. And attack. They will attack there. They'll attack there. Stay and put in Philly. Okay. 
let's start here. Five to one odds. We roll a one. So five to one at one is, I think, a half defender eliminated. Ah. No, it's defender loses two. Oh, okay. That's a that's going to push him out of Philadelphia. Okay, and then here. Did I have a supply? I wanted the supply to stay here. That's we'll just say they have one supply here. Okay, we have supply and supply. Oh, and the Indian unit. Oh, this was an interesting thing. I screwed up as the British. I should have kept a British unit there. Okay, Indian units attack at minus one. He is in supply, so that means this he acts as two. And so it's three, six, nine, ten. So it's going to be five to one odds against the Indian unit plus one. So we roll a four and we get a five. Five to one at five is a half defender limit. He stays put. The Mohawks hang in there. Can the Mo Are the Mohawks going to fight back? No, they will not fight back. Okay, and that is the end of the turn. Um, they can't really do anything else, so we will go to the next turn in New York. We get these guys. Now, I think what we're going to have to do, we've got New York under pretty good control here. We really need Albany. Uh, he's in pretty good shape. Three, two... Three, four, five, six, seven. I'm going to keep this is this one. Okay, I'm going to keep one, two. Uh, that is a stream. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I think this map, it's not like a Redmond Simonson map. I think I mentioned that this is the opposite of a Redmond Simonson map. It's it's colorful and it's interesting, but sometimes it's kind of hard to see what you're uh, crossing or what the terrain is. And especially when you have these shadows of the mountains and the streams against them, it's kind of hard to tell. Is there a stream here? I guess there's not. That's just the shadow of the mountain. But Okay, right here, these guys will attack. Um, I'm going to split these guys. Um, let's see here. Decrease decrease we're going to clone him and we're going to decrease him by one there we go we're going to keep fort ticonderoga but we're going to go one two three four five is there a stream there there is six. Oh, okay he can enter into that fray there um okay so these guys here are right here just uh north of uh, Albany. That's where the battle is occurring. Down here in Philly, we got nine to three. We got three to one odds, minus one. We'll go ahead and attack. And we get a two, so that's a one. So three to one with a one is attacker loses one, defender loses one. We're going to decrease and decrease. Okay, now back big battle of Albany here. Let's uh, let's take this stack apart. And I think as the British, we are going to fight to the death here. Okay. That lone Indian unit held on. Uh, okay. So both sides have supply. Uh, they have artillery, but these guys are not entrenched. So... I will say, so that art artillery doesn't matter. Okay, we've got one and three is four, eight, 13 to three, six, nine, 10. So it's gonna be one to one odds. It's just gonna be one to one. 
And we get a five. One to one with a five is a DL1. Defender loses one. Okay. We can delete this. Are they going to fight back? Three, six, nine. It's now one to two odds. I don't think we're going to fight back. We're going to stay put. And that's the end of the British turn. Okay, we go to the American turn. They get more in Albany, and we are going to go... We are simply going to move back into Albany and be under the entrenchments. And that goes to the British turn. Now, the British turn is going to be moving into Albany. This is the last turn of the game for the Brits. And everything can move in now. We are going to make it one grand attack here. Um, oh, these guys can move up. Let's start here. Four, eight, two. Four to one odds, minus one. We roll a one, we get a zero at four to one. A zero at four to one is that attacker loses one, defender loses one. Okay, so we're going to decrease, and we are going to decrease. Um, okay, let's see here. Yeah, we have got a ton of units here. Let's get some of these move things out of the way. Let's just move our... Yeah, like I say, that's probably the one thing about this game is just the stacks of units you get. You spend your time maintaining units. Actually, we can just forget about those guys. Oh, no, we can't because we are fighting in against an entrenchment. They are supplied. Both sides are supplied. Okay. So they have a, they have plus three. They're both supplied. Um, five, six, 10, 13, 18, 19, 20, 21, two, five, 10, 15, 16. So it's gonna be, it's going to be one-to-one -one odds. No, wait. Let's see. Two. There's five. There's ten. There's fifteen. Sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. Still one-to-one -one odds. And um, minus one plus two. Okay. One-to-one -one plus two. We roll a two, six. We get an eight. Ooh. Okay. Eight. Defender, half defender eliminated. Okay. Three, five. I had 18, so we got four. Two, four, six, seven, eight, nine. There we go. Okay. Doing the maths there is kind of hard. Um, not hard, but just getting everybody right. What am I going to do? I think I'm going to, I'm going to get rid of this supply unit. And I think the defenders will continue to defend. I don't think now their odds are stacked against them so much that they're just going to waste themselves by attacking. So, okay, we got five, six. Here we go. Let's do this. Uh, to... Increase is a control X. Um, one, two, three, and we'll get rid of that. Delete, and then we will take this guy down by one, and we will add one here. Let's just do that. That makes it easy. Have all the, have all those fives makes it easy. So I think the final odds here are going to come out uh, in the British's favor at 2 to 1. And then with the entrenchment and the artillery off against each other, it's going to be plus 2. So let's go ahead and roll 2 to 1 plus 2. I got a 1, so that's a 3. So 2 to 1, it's a defender loses 1. Okay, so the defender will lose a unit. 
And again, I think the uh, defender will continue to just defend. Um, I mean, I really the the British have this wrapped up unless they something really happens. Um, let's see. So now we have 5, 10, 15, 21 to 3, 6, 7, 8, still 2 to 1. We roll a 4 and we have add a, it's a 6. So 2 to 1 at 6 is half defender eliminated. And so 3, 6, 7, 8, so that's 4 that we lose. We can delete this guy and take this guy down by 1. Okay. Again, attack, 5, 10, 15, 21 to 5, 4 to 1 odds. We roll a 2 and get a 4, adding our die roll modifier. So 4 to 1, 4, defender half. And um, so we'll take it down by 2. Okay, then it's going to be 5 to 1. Is it going to be 5 to 1 or 6 to 1? 5, 10, 15. Oh. This, I was going to say we could, if we had six to one odds, we would automatically eliminate him. But since he's an entrenchment, I don't think we can. So it's seven to one, but uh, we roll a three, and that gives us a five. And a five is a half eliminated. And that takes him down to a two. Um, we could roll again. Basically, we could essentially roll till we got a... Uh, Let's see, we need a six, five, we need a four or better. If we got a four or better, it would eliminate this guy. And there's your six, so that's that eliminates him. Okay, so he's deleted. And Albany is now ours. And I might as well just go ahead. I don't really need them, so I'm just going to destroy these. And that is pretty much the game. The only thing left is this, uh, they have one unit down in Philadelphia, but they have New York, they have, they have all the places. They have New York, they have Albany, they have Ticonderoga, Fort Stanwix, and Philadelphia. So, essentially the British won this one um, pretty easily. I, the Americans have a pretty hard time with this, with the way it's written, but I don't know. It's okay. I don't think this is the best scenario in the game, but it's all right. And uh, anyway, next week we'll be doing the scenario for the Southern Campaign. After that, we'll do Yorktown. And after that, we'll play the campaign game. So that's what I got. Thanks for watching. I really appreciate everybody and for the likes and subscribes. Man, those are awful nice of you guys. I, again, really appreciate that. So I'll let you guys go, but thanks a lot, and I'll talk to you later. Bye.